Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and this is my weekly bouquet making session for my 2022 summer membership. So my members get five weeks of fresh flowers and this is week three. I'm actually grateful that it's time to make bouquets because I'm having an extremely stressful morning and um, this is going to help, I know it is. So many of you guys know that I purchased the local nursery in my hometown and it's in um, pretty desperate need of renovations and the insurance inspection just came through and there is a list of things that need to be remedied within the next 90 days. And the list is pretty extensive. And um, I'm, so I have a little bit of a, I'm having a little bit of a panic about it. Uh, but I'll save that for a nursery renovation video. And I will use this bouquet making time with you guys to de-stress and to just get lost in the flowers. That's what I love about flowers. They always make me feel good no matter what is going on here or here they always make me feel better. So let's get to it. As always, we are starting with the ingredient list. And today we have ooh, a big old bucket of rose lilies. The scent is so strong. Some people don't like it. Most of my customers though really love the lilies. For these lilies, this is an example of a stem. Oh, wow. Obviously a rose lily is a double flowering lily and some of them are a little bit open. Some of them are not and uh, they will open very soon. Let me get an example of that for you guys. I show you guys this often. I don't want to break anything, but as you guys know, lilies can be uh, very delicate. So I've been harvesting these over the past week and saving them for my CSA. Oh, please don't break. Some of them are in the less open stage, some are in the more open stage, but these still will last a really long time for my customers. So I have those, but I also have some customers who are getting non-lily bouquets, and that is okay too. Cats, lilies are toxic to cats. All parts of the lilies are toxic. It's toxic. Lilies, they are stars today, but guess who else is a star? <laughs> Lizianthus. This is ABC yellow. I also have a couple of stems of ABC white in here. And guess who's here? This is Roseanne Brown. Roseanne Brown is the stem that made me fall in love with Lysianthus. This was one of the, I guess, varieties that I grew the very first year I started to grow Lysianthus from seed. And I only successfully grew out of a couple hundred, I think I had maybe a handful of blooms and Roseanne Brown was one of them and I absolutely fell in love with the muted romance. That's like my theme right now is muted romance and I only have a couple of stems of this. Where is the other one? I'm getting text message. This week only probably one or maybe two customers will get a stem of Roseanne Brown but I do have a patch of about 200 that will be blooming by the end of the week, maybe next week. We're spreading the love over the next couple of weeks. And Lysianthus, as you guys know, is a really long lasting in the vase. There's a lily in this bucket. There's two lilies in this bucket. How'd they get there? Go in the lily bucket. On the back side of the Lysianthus bucket, I have Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. So Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus is something that I've been growing for a few years now. This year, not as tall as normal, but I think what happened is it's growing kind of sideways. So normally my hibiscus is this tall and it's different than the the big flowering hibiscus that you guys grow for landscaping this is uh, foliage it really doesn't have a flower it has little tiny flowers but they're the same color as the foliage so they're kind of irrelevant so last year it was growing up this tall this year it's only about 18 inches off the ground but it's kind of growing sideways and I am getting some lovely long stems I harvested these about 36 hours ago because this is a stem that tends to wilt like basil and like snow on the mountain euphorbia. So I like to harvest these at least 24 hours in advance because if it's gonna wilt, it's gonna do so within the first day. And then once they're sturdy and have rehydrated, uh, they're good to go and they'll last in your bouquet. Really excited about this combination today. It's gonna be gorgeous. I can just see it already. Okay, moving on. Over here, I have Gumfrina. We all know the Gomfrina, multiple varieties of Gomfrina. We've been harvesting them every couple of days and they're just pumping out blooms. Over here, we have a few different things. I had my assistant, Branda, cut some straw flower and some scabiosa. 
uh, yesterday. So these were all harvested yesterday. In the middle here, just a few stems of status. It's not really pumping out the blooms yet. The status is just on the verge of being good, which is weeks later than it was last year, mind you. The scabiosa, those colors are lovely. Uh, scabiosa is really fun. Oh, wow. That one is magical. Anyway, it's got like a dark purple and light purple, and mm, it's kind of like a mix, but it's probably not. I love it. And then the straw flowers are obviously fantastic. Oh, look, what do we have here? <laughs> Another bucket of gomfrina. And then I have two buckets of my zinnias. Finally have more than one bucket of zins. They're pumping out blooms. They will be getting better as the weeks go on. Unfortunately, we've already had lows in the 40s multiple nights this week. Yesterday morning when I woke up, it was 44 degrees. I'm not even kidding. Amazon Sweet William and Ageratum, two of my most favorite ingredients over the last couple of weeks. I have a bucket of basil. We've got Mrs. Burns citrus lemon basil and cinnamon basil. And we have another bucket of feverfew. Feverfew just pops and makes it beautiful. This is an older bucket of stuff. I'm not gonna be using that. And then over here in this kitty litter box, oh, we have glads. Lots of glads. Ooh, they're so pretty. More of the frizzles are open too, I'll show you. This frizzle is uh, like a, hmm, it's a peachy coral color, absolutely gorgeous. I have red frizzles, I have the uh, chartreuse frizzles. They're coming along nicely. Oh, Rebecca, sorry. There are sunflowers in a bucket down here, some red ones and some yellow ones. And then down here is, I mean, I still, I can't get enough of the Rebecca. All of the different Rebecca's are Rebecca. They're so gorgeous and uh, they'll be putting some pops of color in the bouquets today. In the books, I'm gonna go grab a glass of water, make sure I have all my bouquet supplies and I'm gonna get to making these bouquets. Making me feel better already. Alrighty, let's get started. I am going to start with a lily. And ironically, my CSA member named Lily does not get a lily bouquet. <laughs> she has cats at home. So this is not for Lily, but we are gonna go ahead and love this up with a sprig of mahogany splendor hibiscus. What else, who's coming? I think we're definitely gonna put in some of this scabiosa. Oh my goodness, I am just seeing some of the Feta Morgana scabiosa, uh, which is like an off-white. That's gonna look so good with the Roseanne Brown. But with this Lily, um, I'm gonna put in the white scabiosas. I'm gonna grab another one and perhaps a white straw flower. Yup, okay. And then this scabiosa head right here. All right, okay, let's see. What shall we do for zinnias? I'm gonna bring in this gorgeous, beautiful, I believe this might be wine. There's a couple of them. <gasps> okay, we're basiling. Basil, basil. Wow. And we are gonna put in some pops of Sweet William in this one. That's gorgeous. This, I mean, honestly, these bouquets don't even need the gladiolas to be a beautiful value, but I am going to put the gladiolas in anyway. So this is amazing. I'm going to add a chartreuse gladiola. This one. And, uh, these ones, yes. So this has the chartreuse and coral glads, and then the pops of pink and white, the hot pink and the white all over the place with the basil. That's gorgeous. Oh, wow. <laughs> Every time you cut the basil or take a leaf off the basil, all you smell is the basil. Oh, it's so good. I had a customer who's also my cousin last week say to me, is there some sort of cooking basil in the bouquets? Because um, all my coworkers were asking me what it was. Indeed there is. 
I like it. I am going to put it, and guess what? I actually have all my buckets today already set. All right, oh shoot, guys, I didn't put a Lysianthus in there. Well, <laughs> that needs to change. I, I do have a couple of ABC white Lysianthus. I am going to, I'm just gonna stick it down. Stick it down in right here and pull it down. Make sure it's in the rubber band. Oh, and it's right there. And I just need to trim off that. And it's good to go. Don't forget the lizzies. Okay, number two, I'm gonna go with a non lily bouquet. And I think I'm gonna do some ABC yellow and a rose and brown. I'm gonna take off this lower stem because it was getting wimpy. And I'm also gonna go with a mahogany splendor hibiscus. So I'm starting with these three and I'm gonna add from here. Okay, so the zinnia is in here. I am gonna grab some of the Queen Lime series that just makes the most sense to me. Wow. All right. And I'm also gonna pull in some of the darker Sweet Williams on this one. That one has too many dead ones. So I'm gonna do the little bitsies. There's two little bitsies. Okay. I'm also gonna grab a couple of the coral zinnias. Oh wow, yes, that's this whole thing. And then some feverfew. That fever view, it pops. Okay. Gumfrina. I need to get some basil in here. Oh yeah. That's a beautiful sprig of basil. That is a beautiful sprig of basil. And I'm gonna bring in some of the red sunflowers. These are pretty amazing. They're just, wow. I mean, they're, they're dark, but adding them to this mysterious book, it's a joy. <laughs> I need to take some of these leaves off. Let's try not to decapitate it today, Nicole. We're gonna be okay. Okay, yes. So we've got all of that goodness. Now let's get some, I'm gonna do one more ABC yellow. And who do we want for glads? We're going with a chartreuse glad for this one. Oh, that's special. This glad is the one with the beautiful throat inside. It fell off, oops. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Okay, tying her up. No, I don't feel like, I don't feel like that. I don't want that in there. Maybe one stem of this. Nope, nope. A white zinnia, that's what it was missing. Okay, this right now is one of my favorite, my absolute favorite combinations. It's not for everyone. It's a beautiful bridal, beautiful every day, beautiful all day, every day. There is the first non-lily bouquet. Non-lilies over here. Wow. I might have to take a, a photo shoot with that one. We shall see. Lily, come with me, Lily. All right. I'm gonna go grab some suns with her. Some yellow ones, we'll bring some yellow in. So the floor, I just swept the floor. It's a hot mess because I'm doing flowers for my neighbor's wedding and we're doing sunflowers and blue status and maybe some white filler. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I turned to Sunflower Steve because I wanted some help because we're using more than 200 sunflowers for this wedding. I've been harvesting them for several days now for this wedding. So I said to Steve, look at that stem. That's one stem. I'm using it. 
Wow. I said to Steve, hey, I need to uh, you know, preserve these sunflowers for a wedding in a week. What's the best way to do it? And so he gave me some advice on storing all of <laughs> the sunflowers. So he told me to put them in the cooler, but cut them almost like tight, like super tight. So I cut them super tight. And he told me to put them in flower food and store them between 40 and 44 degrees, and then trim them in three days and replace the water. And that's exactly what I did. So yesterday I trimmed them and replaced the water. And while I was doing that, I also cut off all of the top leaves. So there was no work for the people once I dropped them off for the wedding. Anyway, anyway, so it's been kind of an adventure doing that. It's my neighbor, so I am I really want them to be happy with the flowers. It's gonna be beautiful. I don't think I want this color. I think I want the red. So let me bring in some Strawberry Fields Gumfrina. I feel like that's a better match with this spook. Yeah, I like the way that the red and the, this is like a salmon color. I like the way that those flow together, so that's good. Grab some Feverfew, some basil. I gotta get the glads in here too. Should have done that already. Oof, this is beautiful. This is what it's like before we have, add the glads. And I'm gonna do these pink ones. Yes. Well, I guess it's like a coral. So it's the coral and it's matching the zins-ish. Wow. Look at that. See, this is coming across like orange on camera. That is not orange. That's definitely, oh, there's the color. That's the color. That's beautiful. All right, I'm putting that in. Still got a lot of life left up here on top, so I'm gonna put it more in the center. Okay. Okay, there are three. Have to make 10 more. I'm gonna grab another lily. Um, the 10 more, so when I have to make a certain number of books, I have been pre-folding the paper so I know how many I have left, which is super convenient. Grab another one of these um, Lizzie's. I'm gonna grab some of the mahogany as well. Oh, it's so romantic. And I'm gonna go straight for the chartreuse and coral gladiolas on this one. Oh, look at this one. Look how amazing that is. Ah, uh, okay, so I'm starting with this and let's deep dive into, again, that, bringing in the coral to bounce off the, sh the coral inside of, oh man, I wanna use that one, but it's got a brown spot. I'm bouncing off the coral in the gladiola and adding some coral zins. I do have a lot of coral zins. I planted extra because uh, they were super popular last year. Um, they really do add so much. I'm, I love that. Another coral zin. And then some fever few because it's honestly it's so good. I just had a bride reach out about providing some fever few for her homegrown wedding. She's growing for herself, but she needs a little bit extra. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to provide for her. Oh my goodness. Look at this straw flower. Oh, that's going right there. Hello, it's my friend, it's a zin zin zin. And now this is what I was talking about with the, um, I believe it's Feta Morgana. Uh-huh, so that's gonna go right here. <laughs> so it kind of bounces on top there. Intoxicating, intoxicating. Oh, I think I'll put a sprig of white status in here as well. But when I say sprig, not the whole thing. <laughs> Bing, well, maybe the whole thing, but I like to separate it, put it there. And then this one can go on this side. And then this one 
I'll put in the back and I spread it around so that it kind of goes all over the place, but. All right, I love you. Oh, I love this one too. So this one also has a lily, so it needs to go in a lily bucket with another lily book. book. Okay, so these two have lilies. This one has a lily. Let's make another non-lily. And I'm gonna go ahead and do maybe something brighter than the last non-lily bouquet because the not last non-lily one had um, the muted romance colors. Let's do something brighter with this one, just in case. Oh yeah, let's do purples and fuchsia. Uh-huh, and bring in the, oh wow, look at this neon. It's called Amazon Neon, this bright purple. That's amazing. <laughs> couple stems of that. I'm gonna bring in the azuratum, of course, oops. Wow. Somebody else mentioned in one of my earlier um, bouquet making videos, oh, those purple glads are coming, uh, that azuratum would add pops of color to so many of the bouquets, and you're absolutely right. Adding these pops of azuratum does make a difference in so many combinations. I'll move the glads over, but so far, here's what we have for this deep, dark deliciousness. I'm bringing in this purple one, Scabiosa, I should say what I'm putting in when I'm putting it in. That's gorgeous. That's going there. I'm gonna do one more Lysianthus on that side. If you got them, why not, right? Okay, we're doing another and then gumfrina, and then I need to add the basil, and maybe, I, you know what? Some prairie sun rubecchia. Oh, yes. No, I don't want the yellow. I don't want it. I don't want the yellow. I was gonna add yellow, I don't want the yellow. I do, however, not want that either. Okay. Oh, oh, this is cool. This is cool. I have just a couple of these stems. This is a different type of Sweet William, not even sure what variety, but that's cool. Do I have another one? I do! I love symmetry. I'm gonna put that there. Ooh, the hummingbirds are back. Don't attack me, I'm just making books. And we'll go with this amazing sombrero, also known as a straw flower. It's a beautiful, a hot pink color. Do I have gomph in here? Yes, do I need basil? I need basil. I need two stems of basil. I've been trying to put two stems in. Okay. A little bit of feverfew. I am happy with this. Oh, I feel like that's getting lost a little bit. I wanna pull up that really cool one right there. Oh, I'll go with more of that. This cheerful book is going inside the non-lily bucket, which is right here. I have about a half hour before I have to head out on delivery and I have eight more bouquets to make. Let's do this. We're going with a white lily. Oh. I'm gonna go ahead and add the Roseanne Brown Lysianthus and a stem of that. And there's actually a white Lysianthus right here. We'll do that. Going in for glads, I'm going for the purples, I think. Yes, I'm gonna go for the dark purple glads because it's either that or red. And I'm not doing red right now. So dark purple glads. I'm gonna bring in some of the hot pinky, sweet, no, sweet William. Oh, wow. You and you and you and you. I'm gonna put that right through the top because that's a stunning piece. A straw flower in here. 
We're gonna do a couple sprigs of white scabiosa. I wish my white, um, my white, what's it called? I wish my white gomfrina was ready. They're still on the short side, so not cutting off that yet. All right, we've got gomfrina. Look at the stems, they're so beautiful. So in regards to the wedding that I'm doing for this weekend, I don't have the blue status that I need. They wanted pops of blue and I had suggested status last year when we were talking about it and it's my neighbor and I'm not dealing with the bride, I'm dealing with the mother-in-law because it's being hosted at their house and they're handling all the tables. The bride is like super chill, super chill. I mean, I've known them for years, so it's not, we're bringing the purple in with the, the, the gladiola purple in with the pops of ageratum. More, more, it needs more. Okay. Anyway, the status, my blue status is not growing. I did find that in the wildflower field that I planted when I did the dahlias, I did find that I do have some blue forget-me-nots in there. The Chinese forget-me-nots that are a deeper blue. <laughs> Basil. So I reached out to a couple of my local farm friends and I'm actually gonna be traveling to J Flora Farm, which is about an hour and a half from me tomorrow. And I'm going to be purchasing some of her blue status because I think it's gonna be perfect, perfect with the sunflowers. And I really want it, the vision that I created for my neighbor slash customer. I mean, she's really a client, right? So I want the vision that we had created to come to life. So I'm going to get the blue status from J Flora tomorrow. I'm excited to see her place. She's got a really beautiful farm. She's got a gorgeous Instagram too. I'll put her information in the description of the video for you guys to check out. Uh, she's been doing this, I think 2013 she started farming. Uh, so she's been doing it a few more years um, longer than me. And she's really got a nice, nice farm. So check them out. This one has lilies, so do you. <laughs> this one I'm starting with the glads. Sometimes in order to get the colors of the glads, I need to start with the glads. So I'm grabbing this one, and these are a peachy, peachy, corally pink glad. So it's a white lily. I'm gonna go with the ro the green, I think it's a Roseanne green Lysianthus. I did have a couple of those sprigs. Going with that one, coming over here, grabbing some, oh yes, yes. I do have more of the Queen Lime zinnias um, and they just go so perfectly with this sort of color combination. Hi, hummingbird, very sweet. We're adding in some of the Sweet William because that dark pop of pink is going to be amazing. It already is amazing. Look at that. That, it's looking more red on camera. I'm trying to get it to do, it is looking much more red on camera. Okay. Bringing in more of the corals to go with the glads. Feverfew and basil, wow. That is one stem of fever view. I'm gonna open this up, perform surgery, and put it right down the middle and spread it out. Oh wow, okay. And let's go with Und Weit Van. <gasps> A sprig of peach status is exactly what this one needs. Yes. Okay, a couple scabs. They're so bizarre looking. They really are. They almost look dead. It's okay. I like dead things. Yeah, the pops of gomp. Pop, 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 pop. And gumfrey knock. I mean, um, basil, 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 basil. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, 
I'm God. <laughs> this is the beautiful color combination of the corals and the whites. My battery is going to die. Let's see if we can get through making another book before my battery dies because it's, it's coming close. It's flashing. All right. Speed making. Mahogany splinter hibiscus. More coral. More coral. 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 Ooh, beautiful. Are we still on? What a beaut. I'm not even using half the stuff that I have in these buckets, guys. There's just too much variety. I am going to bring in a couple of the red suns with this one. <gasps> yes. Wow. That is really, really pretty. Do I not have another red sun? I do. It's right here. Just got a weak neck. Wonder why. Okay, pulling in a couple red suns. I'm gonna make them in the middle though because they do have, um, they need a little bit of support um, today for some reason. So I'm gonna put that over top of that lily. Oh yes, so far so good. More white, more white. Do these Sweet Williams? Yes. Okay, so I have two Sweet Williams. And I've got some scabiosas that I'm gonna bring in here. One, two, very cool looking. Ooh, a couple chartreuse zins as well. Who else? Basil. Fever few. Basil. Oh, wow, that's a thick sprig of basil. I'm surprised that it stayed. Sometimes it can go kind of weak in the vase. And then we're going to gomp it up. Kind of like the orange with this one. So I'm going to put little pops of orange gomphrina. And it's bringing out the beauty like the coral. Yay! Okay. Whoop, it's a jungle down here. I love the dark sunflowers. Oh, beautiful. The battery on my camera actually died. I had to charge it, which means I've been set back a few minutes. So I have about 18 minutes to finish up and get on the road. I have enlisted Veda. My daughter is down here to help me. So I'll be making the bouquets and then she'll be wrapping them up, which is gonna save me enough time. Therefore, let's get started. <laughs> the white lily coming in hot, going with the mahogany splinter hibiscus, adding in some gorgeous lisianthus. And then we're walking over and I'm going with red today. Going with red, haven't done red today yet. It's calling my name. Oh my gosh, the gladiolas are, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Yellow, yellow. Bring in the suns, bring in the suns. Oh, why? Why didn't I do this earlier? This is so good. Uh, do you see these Goldilocks Rebecca doubles? Aren't they flirty and delicious? I think I started with a bouquet this color last time and now we're eight books in <laughs> and doing it again. Grabbing a lot of yellow on this one. Even a uh, yellow zin, putting that in, but I also have a couple red zins. This is just zinful. <laughs> okay, let's do some basil. And another basil, because why not? Feverfew. Yes, please. That flirtatious fever few. Such a flirt. Such a flirt. Okay, you ready for this, babe? The lowest stem is right here. So I'm taking it, lining it up, and chopping it off. And then you take the rubber band, one, Two. These are pretty big, so on the third, I stop, grab a thing of flower food, 
and put it there. And now it's your turn. So that lily I want in front, so right here. And now you fold it up. All you have to do is lift, yep, nope, nope, nope. I had it the way where I wanted it because I don't want the paper too close to the bottom, otherwise it gets wet. But I'm gonna end up stapling the flower. No, you're not. Rain. Nope. Cool. Like this. Nope, you have to move the flower out of the way. And then right here. And then up here. Watch your fingers. Perfect, and then put it in this bucket right here. Put the book in the bucket. Okay, so that's her job. Oh, wow, no, I forgot. I have to show them. Oh. Reds and yellows and whites. Beauteous, thank you. Okay, can you handle it? She can handle it. Another non-Lily one because I did realize I do have at least two customers who asked for no lilies. At least two. So I'm gonna do a purple and white one. And I'm gonna do three glads in this one. With light purples. And if I have a dark purple, I'm gonna use a dark purple, but I don't think that I do. But this one's like a pinky purple. I'm gonna grab some more of the purpley dianthus, which is wondrous. What else am I doing? Ooh, this chartreuse one. This is going in. <laughs> I'm not centered anymore. There, so sorry. Fever few again. The purple, let's do cinnamon basil. Yes. More fever few. And then you guessed it, ageratum coming in. And I'm probably gonna do some, uh, some scabiosa over there. Wow, this, this is awesome. Oop, that feels a little weak. That also feels weak. <gasps> Good. Uh-huh. And we'll grab in a couple of the white scabs. <clears throat> Shouldn't really call them scabs. Kind of sounds gross. So much to look at. Okay. This one's delicious. Ready? While Veda's wrapping that up, I'm gonna get started on another lily bouquet. Whites. Um, I'm gonna do pinks again on this one. Wow. Got some a delicious assortment of this. When you're done wrapping that, you wanna come and show it to the camera, honey? And I'm gonna use these pink and white Sweet Williams. I love these ones. The camera's, the battery's gonna die again, but that's okay, I have another backup. I have a backup. Let's throw some pink straw flowers in. This is a pinky pink one. So hope there's somebody who wants pink. Sure there will be. So just show the front of it and like kind of spin it around. <laughs> spin Lower. Uh. Slower. Not, don't shake it. There's an art form to this. It's marvelous. I like your bobo earrings. Bobo tea? Boba. Boba. <laughs> I'm sorry. Boba. Boba tea. Bobo. That's just silly. Oop, that one broke. Veda has requested one with, with less color. So I think I'm gonna do a monochrome white and green, yes, which includes this. So we'll do a lily. So white and green, that's all we're doing. <laughs> oh yes, show, show the camera. Oh, it's not good enough. Here is the pinky one. <laughs> You're learning, darling. You're learning. I just have to spin 
a book here, Ron. Spin a book. It's a profesh. Spin a book. I should make book spinning classes. No. <laughs> Veda, this is a great idea. This is a great idea. Okay. It's coming together. It's coming together. Oh. That one's dirty. I only have one glad. That's not. Can you go in the cooler and see if there are any glads that are this color? In the cooler. Where am I in the cooler. In the cooler. In the corner behind the door. Bring your phone and use the flashlight and make sure you shut the door on the way out. I'm sneaking in one of those. That's green enough. Okay. Veda and her amazing ideas. That's bridal right there. Wow, that's gorgeous. While I'm waiting for Veda to get the um, finale to that one, I'm gonna go ahead and put together uh, the last one. The back of these lily leaves have a little bit of browning on them. I'm just taking them off. You really can't see them just on the side. Oh, she's back. Oh, you found some. Okay, great. We're gonna finish this one then. Babe, look. Do you love it? Okay. Should I put, should I do just a little bit of color though? No. No? Veda votes no. This is beautiful. It is, but I really wanna put just a little bit of color in it. No. No, no. she says no. I have to put basil in it. Okay, let's wrap it up. I think after she's done wrapping that, I think this is the last one after this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yes, this is great. I'm gonna grab the lily that I just started to clean. The back of the petals were a little dirty. I have cleaned them off and now I'm bringing the color. Even though I love that, I'm bringing the color. Boom, boom, a bada bing, a bada boom, a bing. Oh, wow, wow. She's not wrong. It is gorgeous. Look at you. I'm just gonna set that there for right now. All right, basil. We are going to bring in Adoratum all the way around. Make that baby pop. This Sweet William to the back side. Gonna grab a lovely straw flower. Make that sing. We are gonna add a couple of Rubecchia. Bring in some yellows. Ooh, and this double that double Goldilocks. Hello, Mr. B, go away. And then some gomps. Here you, oh, it's okay, here you go. Go wrap her up. Alrighty, these are amazing. Veda, I think I'm gonna have to take some actual pictures of this. Wow. <sighs> here comes the bride, here comes the bride. You were thinking what? Dana. Oh, you were thinking of my friend Dana. But Dana did say at the end she wanted some burgundies in it. I know, but I'm not, I don't like the burgundies. Oh, you're not Dana. Okay. All right, I'm going to load up the car and deliver these CSAs. Thanks guys for sticking around and being with me for CSA week three. And you know what? That did make me feel a lot better. Oh, gimme, gimme. <sighs> There, there's the color. I love all of these bouquets and I'm really excited about everyone's this week. I hope everyone's happy, I hope they're happy. The hummingbirds are <laughs> dancing around me. They just buzz my head. So I quick turn the camera on. There's, a, I have a feeder right there. 
Hopefully they won't buzz my head again, or hopefully they will. <laughs> okay. Shut up, Nicole. Just stop talking. Just let them see. <laughs> it is funny. Bobo. End scene. Cut. Time to pack it in to the car. It is 12.16, we are one minute late. We have to go, we have to go, the Grinch. Are you coming with me? Are you coming with me? Grab a bucket. 5.30, self-nosing. Six o'clock dinner with myself. I can't cancel that again.